Uh, hello everyone, my name is William Chen and welcome to Math Kangaroo 3rd to 6th grade lesson 1. Firstly, what is Math Kangaroo? Math Kangaroo is a yearly math competition. It is for everyone from 1st grade through 12th grade. It is segmented in every two grades. This means that 1st grade and 2nd grade take the same test, 3rd grade and 4th grade take the same test, and so on. Math Kangaroo consists of 30 questions. It is se separated into three parts. The first 10 questions are worth three points. The next 10 questions are worth four points. And the last 10 questions are worth five points. Questions are roughly in order of difficulty. In the Math Kangaroo preparation class, we'll go over six topics. Topic one is numbers. Two is fractions and decimals. Three is time and calendars. Four is patterns. Five is mathematical logic. Six is geometry. First lesson involving numbers. We will be learning about the visibility patterns, the greatest common factor, the least common multiple, prime factorization, and how to use prime factorization. First, let's start with the visibility pattern. A number is divisible by two, it's an even number, meaning it ends in two, four, six, eight, or eight, or zero. A number is divisible by three, then the sum of its digits are divisible by three. This means that if you add the numbers, the digits in the number up, that number should also be divisible by three. For example, look at the number 123. The sum of the digits in this number are 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6. 6 divided by 3 equals 2 without a remainder. 123 is divisible by 2. The number is divisible by 4, then its last two digits are divisible by 4. For example, 25,056. You can only look at the last two digits. Since 56 is divisible by 4, the entire number is also divisible by 4. Number is divisible by 5. The last digit must be either 0 or 5. Number is divisible by 6. It must be divisible by 2 or 3, meaning it must be even and the sum of its digits must be divisible by 3. And if a number is divisible by 8, its last three digits must also be divisible by 8. For example, 25,000 and 56. 56 is divisible by 8, the entire number is 3. And if a number is divisible by 9, then the sum of all of its digits is also divisible by 9. This is similar to the divisibility by three rule. Now let's talk about the greatest common factor, or greatest common device, also called the GCF or GCD. The greatest common factor is the greatest common factor of two numbers. And it is the greatest number that is a factor of both of them. One way to find the GCF of two or more numbers is to list the factors of each number. Find the greatest number they have in common. For example, let's look at 8 and 14. Factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. And the factors of 14 are 1, 2, 7, and 14. The greatest number that appears in both categories is 2. Now let's look at the greatest common factor of 8 and 12. Can anyone tell me what the greatest common factor of this is? Uh, please post your answer into the chat. Uh, I'll give you like one minute to answer this. Factors of 18 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Therefore, the greatest common factor is 6. 
because the greatest number that appears in both lists is six. So does anyone, everyone understand this? If you don't, please raise your hand or type something in the chat. Now let's talk about the least common multiple. The least common multiple of two numbers is the smallest number that is a multiple of both of them. One way to find the LC on, of two or more numbers so list the multiples of each number, so we find the smallest multiple they have in common. The multiples of a number are, th are the numbers that can be divided by that number. Let's find the least common multiple of 4 and 10. First few multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and so on. First few multiples of 10, 10, 20, 30, and so on. You can see that the smallest one in both lists is 20. 20 is an LCM. Now, can you guys try finding the LCM of 12 and 16? If you have the answer, please post it in the chat. The right answer is 48. We can get this by listing the multiples of 12 and 16. First few multiples of 12 are 12, 24, 36, 48, and 16. First few multiples of 16, 32, 48, and 64. The smallest one in common is 48. Now let's talk about prime factorization. Prime factorization is an easy way of finding which prime numbers multiply together to make the original number. Prime factorization includes splitting a number into multiple parts. These parts should multiply up into the original number. We can split these parts even further until we end up with only prime numbers. These prime numbers are its prime factorization. For example, looking at 48, 48 equals 8 times 6. We can split 6 up further into 2 and 3. We can split 8 into 4 and 2. And 4 equals 2 times 2. Since 2 and 3 are all prime numbers, this is its prime factorization. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Now you try. What is the prime factorization of 36? Uh, one person has gotten the right answer. The prime factorization of 36 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. The way we do this is that we first start with 36. We can split this up into 2 and 18. We can further split 18 up into 2 and 9. We can split 9 up into 3 and 3. This way we can figure out that 36 equals 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Now let's talk about how to use prime factorization. We can use prime factorization to find the least common multiples and greatest common factors. The greatest common factor is the product of the least number of each prime. The LCM is the product of the greatest number of each prime. For example, let's find the LCM and GCF of 48 and 36. We know that 48 equals 2 cubed times 3. Wait, no, 2 to the fourth power times 3. 36 equals 2 squared times 3 squared. GCF is a product of the greatest number of each prime, the least number of each prime. If you look at the prime 2, the least number of it is 2. So we take this for the GCF. And for the prime 3, the, least, the smaller number is this. So we take that for the GCF. Therefore, we can multiply them together. You can see that the GCF is 2 times 2 times 3 equals 12. 
therefore the GCF is 12. The least common multiple is a product of the greatest number each time. So for the prime two, we take two to the fourth power. For the prime three, we take three squared. Using this, we find that the LCM is two to the fourth power times three squared equals 100 and uh, I think 50, you know, 144. Now let's try find the least common multiple and greatest common factor of 13 and 16. We already know that the prime factorization of 36 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And the prime factorization of 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. There are 2. This equals 2 squared times 3 squared. This equals 2 to the fourth power. Therefore, the greatest common factor, which is the product of the least number for each prime, is 2 squared. Because the smallest number of 2's there are is 2. The smallest number of 3's there are is 0. And the, greatest, and the least common multiple of this number, 2 to the fourth power, times 3 squared. Because the most number of 3's there are is 2. The most number of 2's there are is 4. Wait. Now let's do some actual math kangaroo problems. The natural number greater than zero is written on each side of the die shown. All products of opposite numbers are of the same value. What is the smallest possible sum of all six numbers? In this problem, we have a six-sided die. We know that all numbers on opposite faces have sum to the same value. I mean, they multiply to the same value. We want the smallest sum of all six numbers. I'll give you three minutes to think about this, and if you have an answer, please type it into the chat. So we have one A. The answer is actually C. To do this, we need to first find the greatest common, the least common multiple of the three numbers shown. This is because this is the smallest possible number that can be the product. We know that 10 equals 2 times 5, 15 equals 3 times 5, and 5 is already prime. Least common multiple of this is 2 times 3 times 5 equals 30. If the sum of all six numbers is 30, then the number on the opposite face here is 6, number over here is 2, and the number on the bottom is a 3. Therefore, the total sum is 10 plus 15 plus 5 plus 6 plus... Not what the... Plus 6 plus 2 plus 3. Uh, this number equals 41. So therefore, the answer is C. Next question. Some of four, the four smudges hide four numbers, one, two, three, four, and five. Calculations along the two arrows are correct. Which number hide behind the smudges is R? I'll give you another three minutes to think about this. If you have an answer, please send it in the chat. Uh, we have an answer of five. The correct answer is E, so good job, Zachary.
way we do this is by first looking at the bottom row of smudges. Smudge one times smudge two divided by smudge three equals eight. The only numbers that can multiply to be eight or multiple of eight are two and four. The smudge is one and two or two and four. Smudge three must equal one. The top smudge plus smudge one minus one equals eight. The smudge one plus star equals nine. Therefore, smudge number one equals four, and the starred smudge is five. Therefore, the answer is E. Next question. Person knows that one, 1,111 times 1,111 equals 1234, 321. Which result does he get for 1111 times 2222? Uh, I'll give you three minutes to think about this one. And if you have the answer, please post it in the chat. Uh, so we have a D and a C. The correct answer is actually D. The way we know this is that we know 2, 2, 2, 2 equals 1, 1, 1, 1 times 2. Therefore, 1, 1, 1, 1 times 2, 2, 2, 2 equals 1, 1, 1, 1 times 1, 1, 1, 1 times 2. Therefore, all we need to do is double this number. And the result is D. So next question. Mona, Asma, and Nadja work in the same nursery. On each day from Friday to Monday, exactly two of them are working. Mona works three times, and Asma works four times a week. How many times does Nadja work per week? I'll give you another three minutes to think about this. And if you think you have the answer, please post it in the chat. So we got two answers. B and C. Correct answer is actually C. Let's count the total number of times they work. Since there are five days, two people work per day. Therefore, there are 10 working days. Mona works three times and Asma works four times. We simply subtract three and four, and we're left with the result three. Therefore, the answer is C. Next question. Mr. Bauer has 10 ducks. Five of these ducks lay an egg every day. The other five lay an egg every second. How many eggs will the 10 ducks have laid after 10 days? So we have our answer C and A. Correct answer is A. So Mr. Bauer has 10 ducks. Five of them lay an egg every day. The other five lay an egg every second day. So therefore, during 10 days, five of them lay an egg every one of those 10 days. So the total number of eggs they lay is five times 10 equals 50. Five of them lay an egg every other day. So they only lay eggs on five of the days. Some of these is 75. So therefore the answer is A. 
Next question. Each plant in John's garden has exactly five leaves or exactly two leaves in the flower. Total the plants have six flowers and 32 leaves. How many plants are growing in the garden? We'll give you three minutes to think about it. And if you think you have the answer, please post it in the chat. So, oh, so far we have one answer. The answer is A. The way we do this is by looking at the flowers. Notice that there are only one way to have flowers. So therefore, since there are six flowers, you must, you must have six of these plants. This provides us with six flowers and 12 leaves. We subtract 12 from 32. We find out that we have 20 leaves left. Since each one of these plants provides five leaves, by 20 by five, and we end up with four. We have four of these plants, giving us 20 leaves. So therefore, in total, we have 10 plants, four plus six. Uh, next question. The plane has 12 carriages. In each carriage, there's the same number of compartments. Mike is sitting in the 18th compartment behind the engine. This is in the third carriage. Luan is sitting in the 50th compartment behind the engine. This is in the seventh carriage. How many compartments are there in one carriage? Basically, there's a train. And in the train, there are some carriages. Note that in the third carriage, there's 18. The seat 18 is in the third carriage. And in the seventh carriage, there's seat. Uh, so far, we have one answer, B. That is the correct answer. So the way we do this is by looking at the numbers. Number 18 is in the third carriage. And the number of seats in each carriage must be greater than six. The number of seats in each carriage must also be uh, less than uh, less than nine, because if there were more than nine seats in each carriage, then the 18th compartment will be in the second carriage. We also know that the 50th seat is in the seventh carriage. This means that the number of seats in each carriage must be uh, This means that the sixth carriage must hold less than seat 49, which means that the number of seats in each carriage must be greater than eight, or equal to eight, actually. So therefore, the number of seats in each carriage is eight. We can check our answer by plugging this in. Seats one through eight are in the first carriage, seats Nine through sixteen are in the second carriage. Seats seat seventeen through twenty-four are in the third carriage, and so on until seats forty-nine through fifty-six in the seventh carriage. Next question: If three digits of the three-digit number are multiplied, you get one hundred and thirty-five. Which result do you get by adding the three digits? I'll give you three minutes to think about this. And if you think you have the answer, please post it in the chat. Uh, so far, we still don't have any answers. However, the right answer is D. We can get this by finding the prime factorization of 135. Using prime factorization, using factorization rules, we know that three is a factor. Dividing by three gets you 45. 45 equals three times 15 equals three times five. Based on this, we know that five must be one of the digits of the three digit number. Leaves us with three, three, and three. We know that five must be a digit because there are no multiples of five that are still a single digit number. 
based on the three, three, and three, we know that the other digits are three and a nine. Some of these numbers is 17. Therefore, the answer is D. For our final question, in a restaurant, there are 16 tables, either three, four, or six chairs. A total of three or six guests can sit at these tables, which has three or four chairs. The restaurant seats 72 guests. How many tables is three chairs are there? And so we're almost out of time. I'll just solve this problem quickly. So we know that there are 72 guests. 36 can sit at the tables with three or four chairs. Therefore, 36 guests sit at tables with six chairs. If we divide by six, we find that there are six of these tables. Therefore, since there are 16 tables, there are 10 remaining tables. And, that, and 36 people sit in there. We can find that 36, we know that if all of the tables have three chairs, then there are 10 times three equals 30 seats. We need six more chairs. So we add a chair to six of these tables meaning there are six tables with four seats and four tables with three seats. Therefore, the answer is A, four. So, good job, everyone. In summary, the things we went over today are divisibility patterns, the greatest common factor, the least common multiple, prime factorization and how to use prime factors. If you have any questions about this lesson, please email me at wilchen2009 at gmail.com and uh, have a nice day, everyone. Goodbye.